Okay, let's discuss membrane transport, meaning ways that solutes or things, molecules cross the cell membrane. So crossing the cell membrane, we can classify the mechanisms of crossing the cell membrane into two big categories. They're either passive processes, passive process versus active process. And the rule is that the basics for defining passive versus active is that passive does not require ATP. So no ATP is used, meaning no energy is expended in order to do, to do the passive transport. This one requires ATP to be broken down and for energy to be expended in order for it to work. Also, in general, passive will move things from high concentration to low concentration. That's called moving down gradient, while active goes from low concentration to high concentration. That's a hallmark of active versus, versus passive processes. All right, and we'll hit, hit, hit this back shortly. So, one of the most common passive processes in the body, in your cells, is what we call diffusion, okay? So, let's look at diffusion. Fusion against passive process, meaning no ATP is required. And here is defined to be is the random jiggling movements, random movements, movements of particles from high concentration to low concentration, meaning if you had, say, this is an environment where over here is separated by a chamber that's permeable, and here you had a bunch of, say, sodium over here, and over here you have, say, one sodium, so, so this is at time zero, at time perhaps equal to 10 minutes, this situation will be different because these things would eventually make their way across. And so then the distribution becomes more even as these things diffuse from where they're high to where they're low. Okay, so that's diffusion, movements of things randomly just hitting each other, colliding and spreading out from where they're, too, from where they're identified or concentrated out to where there are less, there is less of them. Okay. Some of the factors that affect diffusion, meaning how fast diffusion goes, depends, depends on a few things. So your rate of diffusion, rate of diffusion depends on a few factors. So one of them is the temperature of the environment. So as you increase temperature, you increase diffusion rate of passive goes. Because as you increase temperature, you increase the kinetic energy of the particles, and so they hit each other faster, more energetically, and spread out faster. So that's the so temperature increases, you increase diffusion. Also, you have the size of the solute. Whatever is moving around, the smaller they are, so lower, so lower molecular weight, also leads to higher diffusion and vice versa, right? So if you have big things, they move slower. But smaller things go faster, the smaller they are. And also the size of gradient, meaning the size of the difference in concentration. For example, this is, this is a cell membrane, and here you have sodium out here at say 80 molar, and sodium in here 
also sell at 10 molar. And at the same time, you also have, say, potassium. Potassium in here at 30 molar, and potassium out here at 10 molar, okay? So in this case, in for diffusion, right, the sodium would diffuse from high to low, so it goes go this way, while potassium would diffuse from high to low, so it would diffuse this way, right? But they would diffuse at different speeds. So if, 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 if all else is equal, and the, only, and the only difference is that the change in concentration is bigger for Na versus K, then Na will diffuse faster. So the bigger the difference is between the concentrations in the, in the two locations, the, the, the faster it diffuses. So it's called, it's called the, size of, the size of the gradient. So the bigger the gradient is, the faster you diffuse. Going. Another factor is the surface area, meaning how much space is there to cross over. Okay? So as you increase surface area, meaning this cell versus this cell, okay, you have more surface area here, so it you have more diffusion occurring faster versus here, here. So the bigger the cell membrane, the more things can, can cross over the cell. So that's the surface area. And also another factor is permeability. So even if the concentration is different, if the cell membrane is not permeable to whatever it's trying to cross over, it won't move, okay? So permeability of cell membrane is also a factor. All right, and speak, speaking of permeability, the way that things cross cell membrane, it can be done in two ways. So things, things can, can, can passively, right, or just percolate. It can move through the bilayer. And things that can, can easily cross the, the, the bilayer, so to speak, right, it can, it can just cross the bilayer like that, cross into the cell, okay? The things that can do these are typically things which are non-polar non things, non-polar, neutral, charged things, and things that are lipids. So like things like steroids can easily cross the cell membrane. They can percolate through, across the, 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 the lipid bilayer because the lipids are lipid friendly. So that's one way of crossing the cell membrane. Another way of, of crossing the membrane in terms of permeability is by using channels. Okay, so these channels is another way. So if you can't cross through here, you can cross through here by using channels. So channels are reserved for the things that can't cross the membrane. So things like, you know, your polar things, polarized things or charged solutes, as well as water typically move through channels. But water also moves, I can move, move, move both ways. Water can also percolate through the, the, the different bilayer. But, but, but it also has its own channel in case you really, really want to go fast. The water can, can use channels to cross the membrane. So membrane permeability can be uh, controlled. You can either you know, open or close channels so things can come in or out. Whereas for other things, they can always pass through because they have the proper properties to get to the membrane. Well, so right, now, so charged things typically can cross the membrane, and sometimes the, the, the most common thing that crosses the cell membrane is water. Okay, so let's, let's look at what we call osmosis. So osmosis is the diffusion of water. Movement of water from low solute concentration to high solute concentration, okay? So, so diffusion of solutes is defined to go from high to low. Diffusion of water goes the opposite way. It goes from low solute to high 
so high solute, solute levels. For example, here, if you had, say again, a situation where you have a, a membrane that, that, that water, water can cross over, if on this side of the membrane, the solution is, say, 80 molar, over here, it is 10 molar, whatever it is, you know, say 10 molar sodium, for example, then in this case, water will go this way. This is the, the direction of osmosis from low to high, okay? Whereas the solids will go this way from high to low. So this is the, the direction of osmosis. Okay. And this water diffusion across the membrane, again, it, it, it can percolate, it can, it can go, water can go directly across like that. Or it can go through specialized channels, special water channels that we call aqua, aquaporins. So aquaporin, aqua porins are water channels that allow for water to cross the cell membrane in addition to crossing it by moving through the phospholipid bilayer. All right, so let's pause there.